Hi everyone, I'm Chad Shoop, and welcome to my latest edition of Bank It or Tank It. Today, I was excited to see a stock that's uh, under the ticker symbol CREE, -E, that's Cree, come up on our watch list because thanks to Stacy who left it in a comment the other week on YouTube asking me to take a look at Cree. So this is a company that goes way back for me because it's one of the first companies that I ever did a full in-depth research report on back in college. We pulled up the valuation models, did the pro formas, and looked at everything. We got to sit down with the management of the company in Raleigh. So that's where my where I'm from, back up in North Carolina. So this was like my hometown, my area that we got to go and meet uh, with the management and just see everything that they were doing. And this is a company that's really transformed over the last 10, 15 years from what was just a lighting company where they were looking to benefit basically from the shift to LEDs being mandatory in all households. So the regulations around that, they were gonna really benefit from that and be an industry leader. And they still are in a sense, but they've made a complete turnaround and they've sold half of their lighting business and they still have some of their LED part of it. But now they're a semiconductor company. So I'm excited to dive into the stock today as our bank it or tank it stock and figure out what we wanna do with this stock over the next 12 months. If it's a stock that we wanna bank on going higher or a stock that's gonna tank and head lower. So before I dive into the fundamentals of Cree, I just wanna give you a chance to click subscribe if you haven't already. You wanna to subscribe to my channel so that we don't miss out on any of my weekly videos that I post on either the bank it or tank it or quick takes or any other market updates that I end up posting to YouTube. If you subscribe, you'll be able to get an alert to all those. You just click the bell and you'll be notified. And you can also take a second to leave me a comment below the video and just let me know what stocks you want me to take a look at because every week I take a stock or a list of stocks for our quick takes. I take up to five stocks, but I'm taking stocks that you all recommended. You either leave me a comment on Twitter or you post a comment below this video, right below the video. You can just post in your ticker symbol, the company that you want me to take a look at, and I'll be sure to feature it in an upcoming Bank It or Tank It. Now, it does take me a couple of weeks to get through a lot of these comments and actually feature them, but I'm working back through all the comments that I have. I have a big spreadsheet of the stocks that you all want me to talk about and feature, and I'm going through all of those, and I'm gonna feature them in the upcoming week. So keep the stocks coming, keep the ticker symbols, just leave me a comment below, and I'll be sure to get to those in an upcoming video. So with Cree today, we're gonna to start with the fundamentals because we wanna take a look at how this transition that they're doing from lighting products and mainly a focus in LEDs over to the high tech explosive industry in semiconductors where they're been lately, they've been riding the wave of electric vehicles and a whole smart car technology. And that's been an extreme benefit to a smaller cap stock in the semiconductor sector like Cree. And we wanna see how that's playing out in their fundamentals. We'll take a look at the fundamentals and net income to see how that's shaping up. So at first glance, it looks like they're trying to make a V bottom here with their net income. That's the line graph on the chart. And then the bars are the total revenues. And you can see that in 2016, they had almost break even on net income, the zero, the, the key to the left-hand side of the charts for the net income. So that's almost near break even for net income. Meanwhile, revenue was up at the highest it's been throughout this whole period that we're looking at. And this goes from 2016 up to the expectations through 2023. But from there, from this 2016 peak, it just nosedives. The net income, they continue to be a, a company that's creating a loss. And this comes all the way up to the actual earnings that we got here for June 2020, where we're, we got an uptick in the net income. So they're seeing some more profitability, but total revenues took another step lower. So we're still seeing total revenues struggling a bit. And that really doesn't look to pick up till 2022, 2023, before they start to get back to where they were in 2016. And part of this has to do with that shift that I was talking about where they sold off a large part of their lighting business in the last couple of years. So that could be the shift in revenue that we're seeing there. And as far as net income, we're gonna see more profitability. Now they're getting into semiconductors and they're selling their chips to these other smart technology products like electric vehicles or smart homes. And they're trying to find their footprint in these companies. And when we take a look at the quick comps here in just a second, you're gonna see that this is really a relatively small cap stock. It's not like advanced micro devices or Micron. This is a small cap company that can really benefit tremendously just from getting a few contracts, just from getting their chips out there in the market. It gives them a lot of upside potential. But when we, when we look at the net income and revenue from what we've been seeing over the last couple of years and the expectations, it's not pretty. This is not, you know, I like to see the stocks that are just consistently growing revenues, consistently growing net income. And this has a lot of volatility to it. And once again, once we get to the price chart and as we move forward, you're gonna see some of that volatility playing out in their price. It's very volatile stock. It sees some pretty massive drops, 50 to 
when the rest of the market is smooth sailing. So, and let's move on over to the quick comps to take a look at some of their competitors. So we have a long list of comparable companies that we wanted to match up with Creed just to see how they stack up. And really, I added on the three at the bottom, Micron, Texas Instruments, Advanced Micro Devices, and these weren't originally part of what this platform that we use, the S&P Capital IQ platform, which is really great, a lot of information, but it wasn't one of the ones that they automatically picked up on to lump in as a key competitor with Cree. And I think part of that is just because Cree is such a small cap stock. You can look at their market, market cap, they're a $6.7 billion company, whereas Texas Instruments is $126 billion. Advanced Micro Devices, $91 billion, and Micron, $55 billion. So those three did not make the list, and it's because they're so large, I believe. The largest that was on the list was Microchip Technology at $25 billion and Skyworks at $23 billion. So they're half of Micron, which is the next one that I pulled into this list. So you can just have a, pers a whole perspective here of the, the type of industry that we're dealing with, semiconductors. It's very high-tech, explosive growth, and these are the chip stocks that are going to go in to provide everything that's going to help make... Um, the 5G technology uh, advanced enough to where it's going to be impactful in our daily lives. And these are the companies that are providing those chips to make that happen. They're going to make sure that these devices that are coming up online have the speeds and are capable of adapting to this market. And investors know it. That's why everybody loves semiconductor stocks. It's one of the hottest industries in the market right now. But you look at the short interest, and this is just basically a red flag to me if we see it being high where we want to look at the short interest as a percent of shares outstanding. This gives, us an idea, not, this gives us an idea of how many people are willing to bet on this stock to go lower. Short interest means that this is how many people are betting this company falls lower. For Cree, it's way above the mean of all these other companies. It's at 12.5%. There's only one, in fact, that's higher at 14.4%, and the average overall is just 4%. So, we're seeing an extremely high short interest here for Cree, and it's because they're trying to make a transition. They're not a originally a semiconductor stock. This wasn't what they have been doing for years. Remember, back when I was looking at the stock 10, 12, 13 years ago during college, doing our research report and looking into the valuations of this company, nothing came up about semiconductors. We talked to the management. That, that was not in their plans at all at the time. It was all lighting products, being first to market, having the best um, LED products that they could and having the patents on their technology that they were moving forward with. So this was a company that was solely focused on lighting and then just over the last few years have really transitioned into being a, more of a semiconductor stock. And because of that, when we get to the market, when we get to the price chart, you'll see the volatility, but that's created a lot of volatility in this stock. And that's why we're seeing investors still be a little wary of what to do with Cree and there's still a lot of people betting on this stock to go lower. Now, price to earnings, I have this here, but for Cree, because we saw the net income was negative, so they don't really have a legit price to earnings ratio, so they get just nothing for this. But you can see that the sector overall achieves a very high multiple, considering the average for the S&P 500 is usually around 20. Once it creeps up to 25, that's considered extremely high. So for this industry, the whole semiconductor out of the quick comps here, 54.7 times earnings. So it's a, a hefty price tag that you get on these stocks, and because because of the tech industry, the growth that comes with these companies. So now let's flip over and we'll take a look at the total revenues in net income growth, the compound average annual growth rate over the last three years. Cree only has a number for revenues, 5.4%, which is pretty solid. It's above the mean of 4.8%. And you can see some of these other companies through here, like Texas Instruments is a negative, um, Mycom, Skyworks, Simtech, Maxim, and Sirius Logic all have negative revenues over the last three years, even though this is an industry growing enormously fast. And this is just their average growth rate, so we're just seeing this trend lower over the last three years for these stocks. Meanwhile, Cree is one of the companies that's showing positive revenue growth, but when we look back at the last three years, you saw that it was really back in 2016 that they had a spike in revenue, and then it just kind of tailed off from there. So that's basically the cutoff, and then we get to the next three bars where we just missed that one gap. Had we looked at Cree before their latest earnings announcement, they would have had a negative for revenue growth as well. So they're just now starting to kind of rebound from the big drop that they've seen, but it's still positive to see those trending in the right direction at the moment. Net income was negative, so they don't have a number for that. And dividend yield, I just like to throw this in there because it gives you an idea of how stable the company's cash flows are and what their mindset is at. Because once they start focusing on a dividend, 
a lot of times they shift away from growth. Now, I always like to look at the analyst ratings for the company because it just gives us an idea of kind of the sentiment that's around the industry for the stock. And when we look at Cree out of 13 analysts, according to the S&P Capital IQ, that cover the company, they have it listed as a hold. So they're not really bullish or bearish. It's just it's listed as a hold right now. And maybe that has to do with the big rally that we've seen. But once we take a look at this price chart here up next, we'll, we'll have a better idea of what's going on with Cree and why maybe a lot of these analysts, maybe it was about a year ago, but today it's listed as a hold and see whether or not we want to bank or tank Cree today. All right, now I have a few things I wanted to point out on this chart. So first, we're starting with the extremely wide view. We're looking at the stock all the way back to its roots. Back in 1993, 1994 is when this company became public and all the way up to today. But this just gives you a perspective of the roller coaster ride that this stock has been on. This is the dot com bubble back in the 2000s. Then it kind of flatlined and just smoothed out for what a decade here. And what's interesting to note is that you would think maybe this was the pop before 2008 and the crisis. But no, this was after the fact. This is where they were back in 2008 before the crash. So back here is when I was studying the stock and taking a look at the valuations and it was happened that everything checked out that this was a company that really had a great position in the LED market for what they were doing. They were financially sound and it was rated as a buy. We came up with a unanimous buy rating for this company and based on our research report that we did in college. But then 2008, the financial crisis hit. It just stuff like this doesn't come up in their numbers and for me it just shows the importance of studying the charts because when you look at the stock you can see it was making lower highs as we come through here and if you zoom in a little bit you can just see the clear like there would have been a trend line and then it broke through that and if you were actually trading this or looking to hang on to it because you're bullish for the long term you'd have had some red flags as you saw this volatility and then on the upside once we kind of broke back through what would have been a trend line connecting these peaks then you had the big rally um, so it just gives you, by knowing the charts and just knowing some key levels and some of the basics of just where to look at for entry and exit points on stocks and at least just when to get out if things are really turning south and then when to jump back in. The price charts really help that instead of just looking at the books and for the valuations. But all in all, this is still, you know, we had it as a buy rating if we just held on through the 60% crash of the financial crisis. It ended up rebounding pretty quick and then here later in 2009, 2010, was back to near all-time highs for the stock but this kind of gets to the point that i wanted to show you with the big chart it's on a roller coaster then it crashed 70 percent from there so that that's a massive drop with really there's nothing broad in the market going on this is just an extremely volatile company and they just were not able to deliver and then they had another massive rally and another massive crash it's just these are insane rallies and insane crashes that you're seeing here in the stock and what really makes out to just be a pretty short term time period, at least for the rally and for the crash. Um, and right now we had another big rally, and then a pullback. But what we're seeing now, you can see I have the red, long-term red resistance line. It broke above that, so that was that was great to see. Now we had a pullback back below this. And we also have a horizontal trend line that you can point out to where it's almost making a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern. This is a key support to keep an eye on, but it's a weak left side of the shoulder and then the head formation and then the right side's kind of got a double. So I don't know if this is really hold as a neckline, um, but it's it's there it's starting to form. So it's something to keep an eye on for a possible head and shoulders pattern. We would love to see it hold above this uh, support area around $57 to share. That would be great to see because what, but what it has right below this also is a another support line trending higher and then the 200 day moving average around $52 to share. So even though it's trading around 58, 59 today, um, if we get the pullback through these key support areas, you still have the 200 day moving average to kind of help it create this uptrend because we had the peak back in April, 2019, and we eclipsed that. We're back up to $74 a share, so it's a higher high. So really, I just wanna see this make a higher low and continue to head higher. So this stock, even though the fundamentals did not really check out, the fundamentals were all over the place and a little too, risky for what I would like to see to give me a check mark for the fundamentals, but the, the sentiment, now the analyst had it as a hold, but you can see how much the stock jumped. Shares have more than doubled from the pandemic, seeing a big rally, then we got to pull back. So uh, the investors are really not sure uh, what to do when they're rating the stock, so they have it as a hold, but I like that the sentiment, the 200 day moving average, also uses as a sentiment indicator. 
and it's trending higher and the stock's above it. So that's bullish for me because it can act as a strong support line here on the pullback and help send shares higher. So sentiment, I'll give it a check mark because for me, the price trumps what we're seeing over in the analyst ratings because they're usually gonna be behind the curve on those. So I like what we're seeing on the price chart and we have the technicals here showing us that there's key levels of support. We had the higher high, now we're trying to make a higher low and turn higher. So I'm gonna have this stock as a bank it and I like it going higher from here. My new price target for Cree is gonna be $100 a share and it you know might seem a little high when you look at the price chart, but really it's just a continuation of kind of the success and volatility that they've been seeing. Just now we're breaking out the new highs. Now we're getting past this hump and as their technology for the semiconductors, that industry that they're in, it's starting to grow. It's really become over half the company's revenues are coming from semiconductors. And as that continues to expand and achieve those growth rates that the industry can, can offer them, we're gonna see shares for the stock really take off. And that's why I have the share price at $100 a share, which we are looking at about a 60 to 70% rally from where shares are currently trading. So this is a nice rally that we're looking at for the stock over the next 12 months. And I think it's gonna take the full 12 months to get there. But more importantly, I wanna see the uptrend continue. I wanna see it make the higher low and turn higher from there and then continue to climb up to this $100 level. So that can be our price target over the next 12 months. So that's all for my video today. This is a stock, Cree, ticker symbol C-R-E-E, -E, that's on my bank it list. So check it out, pull it up on your charts and let me know what you think. You can leave me a comment below on how you're valuing this company and where you see it heading over the next 12 months as well. And be sure to always leave me your feedback. And if you like the video, just click the like button, the little thumbs up below the video to let me know. So until next time, I'm Chad Shoup.